Hi, my name is Mark. So as you can see, we're getting back to the series where I compose a song and show you guys my process. As some of you know, depending on how much stuff I've got going on, I sometimes record these videos in advance. And in this case, while I'm recording this video, last week's video, where I complete the second version of the verse and let you guys decide in which direction we're going to take the song in, hasn't been released. So I don't yet know your guys' opinion. But independently of which direction we take the song in, I already have an idea of what the next part should be, so I think it's not that much of a big deal. And as you can probably see by the title, today we're going to take the main riff, or at least what I consider the main riff of the song, which is this part right here, and we're going to build on top of it. But first, for those who haven't been keeping up, or don't really remember where we are at, here's what we've got till now. And after this part we would go to the verse, but since I'm not sure which verse you guys chose, I won't be playing it right now, but all you need to know is that after this little chorus part with this offbeat rhythm, we go into either an arpeggiated part with some sinister chords, or perhaps some swelling chords with a little top melody-ish part. We start slower and simple and then we start to build it up. And after that part I was thinking, as I mentioned before, to get this main riff and start to build something on top of it. But before we get to that, I just want to say, please subscribe to my channel. As you're probably aware, YouTube acts a little bit weird. Even if you subscribe to a channel, those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box. And even if you ring the little notification bell thingy below, you still really may not notify that channel's content. So if you want to stay tuned to my content, not only do I suggest subscribing and turning on all the notifications, but also follow me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff that I can provide solos and generally go backing tracks, and generally wherever I'm up to at the moment, but I always post about my videos. Links for the usual suspects will be below, but in general, it's my click guitar. And since you're down there, please consider leaving a like and perhaps share this video on social media. I'd highly appreciate it. But getting back to the video itself, the first thing I want to do is... So since you're watching this video, you're probably aware that the same thing that happened in last week's episode which is that the screen recording for this video got corrupted, happened again. I don't really know why it happens. I recorded like I did every single other time, and I clicked export, and then it starts to save, and then it just says, nope, you can't do it. So like in last week's episode, I don't really have a proper screen capture to show you guys how I composed everything, but I still have a little bit of the first part, and I have the finished product, so I guess I'll make do with what I have, but again, sorry, I'll try to get a better, or I wouldn't necessarily say better, just a properly working screen recording software for next week. So yeah, sorry about that, but let's get back to the video. We can check it out right now. Okay, so the first thing I did was that I added an extra eighth note to this bar. It used to be a 4-4 bar with just this C whole note. I tried to do it with a regular 4-4 bar, but at least to me, it just didn't really feel right. And I just moved this riff an octave up, and now what I think I should do is perhaps add some chords here and there. So let's break it down. The first chord, again, is a C minor, since the riff is sort of in C minor, and I don't feel like doing a key change, I don't think it's appropriate right now. I decided I would, one, add some chords that sort of fit around the chord progression riff thingy, 
but also that sort of remind us of the intro. Again, having all these parts sort of connected sort of makes the song feel more cohesive and less a soup of riffs. But I was saying that I was trying to mimic the, the intro by having the sort of descending bass line that sort of creates this contrary motion because it's not like the riff is going up and the bass line is going down, but because the riff is sort of inconsistent, by having a consistent bass line, it sort of glues both parts together. And even though we have descending bass lines, the first chord is a C, the second chord is a G major, the third chord is a C major, the next chord is sort of an F major chord, but we don't exactly have an F major chord. We have the notes A, G and D. But since we're descending the bass lines, and because our next chord is an A flat major, the F would resolve well to an A flat major. So yeah, it's one of those situations where the chord is a little bit ambiguous, and the next chord, even though we're emitting the fifth, in this case I'm filling it as a B major chord, but there's a reason why I didn't include the F sharp, because even though I'm filling it like that, since this part is supposed to be more of a tension part to get you to resume the riff afterwards because there's no F sharp nor G, you, the listener, can either interpret it as a B major chord or a B augmented chord. Because the riff repeats only changes the ending, I thought that because we're trying to sort of take this riff and make it a little bit different, don't worry, we're going to get some variations on it, maybe we could only change the last part of the chord progression. Maybe later in the song we can do something different, for, for now this is what I felt like. So in this ending, the two chords that are different is that I added an A flat diminished chord, and then I moved that A flat diminished chord into a B diminished chord, but this time I made it a more closed position instead of a spread position. It sort of tenses it up a little bit, like I'd expanded before it now contracts, so that we can start the riff all over again, I guess. I'm going to do some variations on it, sort of changing the melody a little bit. Okay, so here's a variation on the melody that I'm okay with. Nothing really fancy, but I think it can work well against the other riff. So if we break it down note by note, effectively, since we're using the same rhythms and the same sort of a thing, the same player can play with different inversions of chords, it's like as if you were playing a different inversion of the riff you were playing before, or a harmonized version of it. Again, there are some spicier notes because I tried to make it a little bit more spicy in the second version. Probably not a super linear nor diatonic harmony, but a harmony in a way. Okay, so we're now for the chords. The chords are pretty much the same. We start out the same way with a C minor, then a G major, B flat major, that sort of F major, D minor thing, the A flat major, and that pseudo B major, B augmented, and we repeat that chord progression, and I knew I wanted to end with this sort of a riff right here, because again, for continuity purposes, because the chorus ends like this, if we end the pre-chorus like this to get into the chorus, it sort of makes it feel more connected. But because going from F major to G major felt a little bit odd, I decided to add that A flat major and play this part of like main riff as a pre-chorus and then going for the chorus. Again, I don't know about you guys, I can only know later by reading the comments, but I think it sounds cool. I could have gone a little bit more experimental with this harmonized part of the riff, but to be honest, I think it sounds cool, and I think because we're only on the first part of the song, we don't really want to get too crazy. If you think about it, even though the song's probably already like, I don't know, two minutes long maybe, the song structure that we have till now is like intro, main riff, chorus, verse, extended main riff, and then chorus again. So it's nothing that is like, I don't know, really spicy or something. It almost has like a pop song structure or something. But yeah, I don't know. Again, you guys tell me what you think. I think it sounds all right, but because we don't really have the context of the full song, we'll have to leave that for the next episode. Again, if there's anything I said or did in this video that you didn't quite get or you want me to explain, leave it in the comment section below because I'll explain it next time. And as I always mentioned in these sorts of videos, if you want to take any riff of the song or any chord progression or something like it and either build your own song or give me your own version of this riff or the verse or something like it, please do and post it either on Instagram or YouTube and then DM it to me so that I can see it and share it because I'd really like to see what you guys can come up with. But yeah, I guess that's it. 
Again, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and on all the notifications. If you can follow me on social media and share this video on social media, I'd highly appreciate it. Check out the other episodes if you haven't already. I'll leave the playlist right there. And other than these sorts of composing videos, I also do guitar lessons and do videos where I basically talk about what's going on on the music industry slash the guitar industry. So if you're into that sort of stuff, I would highly appreciate it if you could check it out. There's quite a bit of a back catalog already. But anyways, I've been probably rambling a lot till now. Cheers! Thank you.